Hi everybody, welcome to another IFR training video. In uh, this video I'm going to show you how to use your Garmin 430 to complete an IFR flight from uh, Springbank, which is near Calgary, down to Medicine Hat. Now this particular video is aimed at my students who will be flying this flight in a King Air simulator, uh, but it may also be of interest to anyone who's just learning how to use a Garmin 430. So uh, here we have the Springbank Airport, and down here you can see Medicine Hat. We're going to fly an RNAV SID out of Springbank that will bring us around to Bacho over here. And then from Bacho we'll take Victor 305 down to Medicine Hat. At Medicine Hat we'll be doing the RNAV 03 approach, uh, and then we'll fly the missed approach, and that will be the end of the video. So let's get started and I'll talk you through the whole process. To make this video I'm using a set of electronic publications that anyone can buy from NAV Canada and the publications that I'm using are up to date uh, as of the date of the video. I'm also using the Garmin 430 simulator which uh, any of you can download from Garmin's website. However the database in the uh, the Garmin simulator is out of date so it's not going to exactly match the publications that I'll be using and I want to emphasize that it would be unacceptable to use an out-of-date database if this was real uh, but my main purpose here is just to show you the process. So we start by hitting the flight plan button and you can see here we're on flight plan page number one but I happen to know that there's a uh, a flight plan already stored for us. We're going to go to flight plan page number two and uh, here we find all the flight plans. Notice that the flight plans can be sorted uh, by number. See over here on the left are the numbers or they can be sorted alphabetically. I have them sorted alphabetically right now but you can uh, resort them by just hitting menu and uh, sort by number like so and if I put it back to uh, alphabetical sorting um, sort by comment so this is called the comment here uh, then CYBW to CYXH is at the top of the list that's the one we want so just turn the cursor on and uh, activate this flight plan so there's activate flight plan and now we're back to flight plan page number one and this is now the active flight plan. So you notice it goes from the uh, Springbank Airport to the Calgary VOR, then down to the Medicine Hat VOR, then the Medicine Hat Airport. Now that's not quite what we want, uh, but this gives us a good framework to get started from. Okay, so the next step is to hit the procedure button, and we want to select in this case a departure procedure, so we select departure. Make sure it does say uh, Springbank up here, so that's good. And we, of course, are looking for the Bacho 1 departure, but uh, as I mentioned before, this is an out-of-date database. So we've got Bacho 2, um, and so just for demonstration purposes here, we'll pretend that it's Bacho 1 and select that. Uh, then we have to select the active runway, so we check the ATIS, and let's say the ATIS tells us runway 25 is active today, so we'll select runway 25. And we'll, you notice we get a little picture here, uh, which we can examine. Once we're happy with that, we'll load this into the flight plan. Once you've loaded into the flight plan, you should always then immediately go through and check all the waypoints. So we turn the cursor on and uh, start going through and we're checking the desired track against the approach plate and the distance. Now the first one uh, from the uh, the airport out to Purpu is not really shown exactly on the on the uh, approach plate uh, so don't worry about that one too much but the second one here track 144 and distance 7.4 miles uh, matches exactly what the plate says and then down to Turney track 124 10.8 miles that's an exact march um, the next one this is where we start to see the discrepancy uh, the departure procedure is being changed. This should be SATL, not third. So, of course, uh, that's not going to match. And then over to Bacho, it's not going to match. If this was real, we'd be dead in the water here we, with an out-of-date database. Um, 
but just for demonstration purposes, let's say that uh, that this is okay. So once you've checked all your bearings and distances, then what's the next thing you should do? Well, the next thing you should always do is check and make sure your departure procedure that ends here in Bacho uh, connects up properly to your en route procedure. And in this case, it doesn't. Uh, you can see after Bacho, the flight plan goes next to the uh, Calgary VOR. So it wants us to turn to a track of 285 and fly for 35 miles up to the Calgary VOR and then do a 180 and come back down to the Medicine Hat VOR. That's clearly not what we want to do. What we want to do is after Bacho, we want to go down to the Medicine Hat VOR. So this leg is redundant. We need to get rid of it. So we just highlight it, we go clear, and then enter. And now take a look and see what we've got after Bacho. We've got the track 105. The LO chart shows 104, but it's just a, a minor typical discrepancy. 101 miles, that is the exact correct distance from Bacho to the Medicine Hat VOR. So now we're happy. So at this point, uh, can turn the cursor off and um, go back to the moving map and we're we're ready to depart we would get back to the moving map by just clicking the flight plan button uh, so if the passengers are on board now we can take off and go uh, and then insert the approach while we're en route but let's say the passengers are not quite on board yet so what we're going to do is insert the approach uh, right now just to save a little bit of time later so once again we're going to hit the uh, the procedure button and this time we're selecting uh, an approach okay right here select approach make sure now that it says medicine hat up here which it does and then select the active approach in medicine hat uh, so we'll say that that's rnav 03 so we select that and then we need to look at uh, which uh, transition we'll be doing. So we'll be coming in from the north and we will be arriving via Vevsva. So we select Vevsva, enter, and uh, we can look that over here on the preview. And then we just want to load it. You don't want to activate it yet. If you activate it, you'd be making the uh, the active waypoint Vevsva. We don't want to do that yet. So just uh, load it. So we hit enter. And now again, just as with the, the SID, we should immediately turn our cursor on, scroll down to the uh, approach, which starts here, and then check it over line by line against the approach plate. So you can see the first uh, leg, uh, 231 and 12.8, this is from the Medicine Hat Airport out to Vesva. This is not what we're going to be doing, so we'll have to make an adjustment here. But then uh, let's just check out the rest of it here. So it says 096 and five miles and the approach plate says 094. So we've got a two degree discrepancy there. Uh, and then from tab V to EPDEG, we've got 030 and five miles. The approach plate again says five miles, but 029. So we've got a one degree discrepancy here. And uh, then another two degree discrepancy to Lodlo, but we do have the correct distance and then a two degree discrepancy out to Setgi, but we have the correct distance. So in each case, we've got either a one or a two degree discrepancy. Um, that's uh, minor and it's consistent. Consistency is more important than the actual size of the error. Sometimes you'll see as much as four, I've even seen as much as five degrees difference between the approach plate and the database. Uh, but what you don't want is to have some legs that are off one degree and another leg that's off four degrees. You want it to be consistent. If there's a four degree discrepancy, they should all be off four degrees. In this case, uh, we've got one or two degrees. That's a very minor discrepancy. We can accept that. Okay, so what's the next thing we should do? Well, just as we considered how the uh, SID had to be connected to the en route section, we should give some thought to how the en route section of our flight plan will be connected to the approach. 
in this particular case it's not going to connect very well at all but let me show you an example of one that can be connected here we have uh, the RNAV alpha approach in Castlegar and this approach has transitions uh, from the west we have a transition from DASB over to uh, Tykes and from the east uh, transition from Irvin to Taiyi so whichever direction you're coming in uh, if this is the approach that you're going to do you should be sure to end the en route section of your flight plan at DASB or Irvin uh, then the approach starts at uh, Tykes or Taiyi depending which way you're coming and the en route section will automatically roll right into the uh, to the approach this is the the simplest way to transition from the en route into an approach but it won't always work so returning to the medicine hat example there is no transition published off Victor 305 down to uh, the initial approach fix and therefore we're in a situation where we're going to have to leave this approach essentially floating like an island it's a separate entity in your flight plan and when the time comes we'll have to activate the approach so in this case there's nothing more to do and I'll show you how to activate the approach here in a few seconds we're ready now to take off and fly the approach okay so now we're, that we've decided uh, that we can't do anything with the approach in this case we're ready to to depart so we'll just turn the cursor off hit the flight plan button to uh, get back to the moving map uh, we've got a message here uh, the uh, GPS is telling us to set our course to 237 uh, which is the uh, current course out to Perpu and uh, we should really tune our VLOC uh, frequencies so um, we'll just uh, tune the Calgary VOR here and we've got the uh, Medicine Hat VOR standing by we're on ground we'll get permission to taxi so uh, taxi out for runway 25 alright so we'll assume we've taxied out now we're ready for takeoff we can switch to uh, the tower frequency and get the uh, the departure uh, the departure frequency standing by five two five okay so uh, we're ready to take off at this point let me just give you uh, a quick departure procedure before departure briefing before we go so all runways maintain 7,000 feet runway 25 uh, not authorized when CYA 263 Sierra is active let's assume that it's not requires minimum climb gradient of 210 feet per nautical mile to 4,700 that's no problem in the King Air we have to climb heading 253 to 4,340 feet and then make a climbing left turn direct to Perpu so at 4,340 feet we'll have to hit the direct button and uh, then we'll go to Perpu um, after Perpu then to Rigat then a track of 144 then to Turney on a track of 124 then to Satol on a track of 088 and then to Bacho on a track of 045 to the assigned route okay so if there's no questions uh, we'll assume now that the tower has cleared us for takeoff and we have the autopilot on heading mode we're going to fly heading 253 that I have set here so here we go roll down the runway and okay so we're through 4340 feet there and we just hit the direct button confirm it does say purple and then hit enter and enter again so you see the desired track changes to 233 and we can now turn and start to go out to Perpu and switch over to nav mode and it's just as simple as that so 
so from here the rest of the way around the, the SID it's just a matter of following the instructions that the uh, the GPS gives us continue our climb to 7000 we would switch to uh, to departure now and uh, they'll undoubtedly clear us up a little further so I'm just going to go into a time compression now and we'll come back to real time as we approach Bacho. Okay, so here we are approaching Bacho, and uh, the Garmin will flash as a message here in a second, uh, as it does on all the turns, to give us a countdown for the turn. All right, so there we are making the turn onto Victor 305. Let me just rearrange the the uh, screen a little bit here. I'll, I'll move the simulator up to the top right and bring the RNAV approach plate in. And then what we should do is a rain prediction. So we go flip over to the aux pages and uh, the second page here and there's rain. Turn the cursor on, select rain. Garmin puts the time in for us automatically. We just check it and then click on uh, compute rain. Here with the computer simulation it, it doesn't work but in the real airplane it would uh, tell you that you do have rain. With the WASP GPS it's uh, really a bit less important to confirm RAIM than uh, with the 430 Alpha non WAS GPS but anyway certainly doesn't hurt to do it even with the WAS GPS and it's compulsory if you don't have a WAS GPS okay so now we're en route cruising at 17,000 feet and we'll just do a little time compression again until we're uh, about 50 miles or so out from Medicine Hat and ready to uh, start down for the approach. During the time compression portion you'll uh, see me switch over to Edmonton Center and uh, you'll notice as we reach the, the halfway point on the airway I also switch over to the Medicine Hat VOR and as we return to real time we're closing in on uh, Edmus and uh, let me just brief you for the approach because we should be cleared pretty soon here. So once cleared we'll be uh, activating the approach and we'll go direct Vevsva. Uh, we're already within 100 miles so our safe altitude is 9,000 feet. Once we're within 25 miles of Lodlow we can uh, descend to 6,000 feet. After Vevsva the track is 0904 to Tab V. Minimum altitude is 4,100 feet. What I'm thinking is that Tab V is nine miles back from the uh, the missed approach waypoint, and uh, using our three miles per thousand foot rule, um, the glide path would be about 3,000 feet above ground level at Tab V, which would make it about 53, 5400 feet. So I want to be just comfortably below the glide path at Tab V. So I'll just descend to 5,000 feet between Bevsva and Tab V intercept the glide path at tab V and follow it down. We'll, we'll confirm that we're 3,200 or above at uh, EPTEG. And the minimum descent altitude is 2,720 feet. Since we're going to be following uh, a glide path, we'll uh, establish a decision altitude of 2,770 feet. That will ensure we never go below the MDA. Uh, so at Lodlow, if uh, we have to execute the missed approach, we climb to 3,900 feet on a track of 029er, that is straight ahead, out to Sedki, where we'll hold at 3,900 till we get further clearance. Okay, so we're ready now to start the approach. Once the controller clears us for the approach, all we do is hit the procedure button and uh, on the menu that pops up activate the approach is at the top of the list so we activate the approach. Bevsva is now the active waypoint 
and uh, the Garmin will give us a revised desired track just make a little adjustment and uh, away we go heading over towards Vevsla now and we can start our descent down to 9,000 feet okay so the next thing we need to do is figure out when we're within 25 miles of Lodlow so that we can descend further now you'll notice at this point that we're still in en route mode but once we come within 30 miles of the airport it will switch over to terminal and since Lodlow is essentially at the airport there's no sense even checking until we switch to terminal mode so once we come back to terminal mode I'll show you how to use the Garmin to figure out your distance to Lodlow okay so I've zoomed in now um, and uh, skipped over four or five point boring minutes uh, we're on our way to Vevsva now just uh, 25 miles back from Vevsva still in en route mode but uh, we must be getting very close to terminal mode and uh, as we switch to terminal mode then I'll show you how to measure distance You see the uh, Garmin just kicked into terminal mode, so we're 30 miles from the airport now. Still uh, 22 and a bit to Vevsva. Okay, so to measure distance, you've got two ways to turn measure distance mode on. I'll show you the hard way first. The hard way is uh, you tap the menu key and uh, you get a menu and you see measure distance is one of the options. Select that, hit enter, and we're in measure distance mode. But all you've really done is turn the cursor on, and you see here at the end of the button it says push for cursor so I can turn it back off or turn it on, just as simple as that. So really all you want to do is just uh, reach over, tap the end of your uh, uh, lower right hand knob here, and we're good to go. Now by turning the, uh, the knobs, the, the small knob will allow me to move my uh, cursor up and down like so and then the big knob will allow me to move it left and right. I want to move it over here and trying to find uh, Lodlow. Now once you get the cursor where you want it, then just zoom in and it will zoom in on the cursor. See I went a little too far to the east, so I'll bring it back over and I'm just looking for Lodlow here. Oops, there's Lodlow right there and uh, we can tell that because it says Lodlow up here gives us our distance to Lodlow which as we suspected is now a little bit under 30. Uh, you don't really want to keep this mode up for for too long that's why I recommend waiting till you're in terminal mode so you can see we're 25.7 now once it gets down to 25 we're safe to descend to 6,000 feet. Another couple of seconds here So there we go, 25 miles. We can now start our descent. We'll just turn the cursor back off. Uh, we set the range to something reasonable. Maybe 35 is good now. And uh, we're now descending to 6,000 feet. And we'll carry on from there. Okay, so we're just coming up to Vevsva now, and uh, we're down to 6,000 feet, slowing to 140 knots, approach flap extended, zoom the map in a little bit there. I have to say that I don't really like the auto zoom feature on the GNS 430 but on the, the GTN uh, simulators you can set the, the minimum and maximum zooms in the menu and that makes it a lot uh, nicer so I really like auto zoom with the GTNs but not so much with the GNS. Okay in a couple of seconds we'll get the, the message telling us to make the turn at Vevsva, we're expecting according to the plate, 0, 09 or 4. And we get 0, 09 or 6. And 3, 2, 1, and 
make the turn. All right, so we're now safe down to 4,100, but we've decided to descend only to 5,000. So we'll start a descent now to 5,000. We've got five miles to get down, so that would be no problem. Now you notice that we're still enunciating terminal mode, but as we make the turn at tab V, we're entering the intermediate segment, and the Garmin should switch over to LNAV plus V. So this is an LNAV approach, uh, but the Garmin will generate a glide path, so that's what the plus V indicates. And as previously discussed, that's why we have to come up with a pseudo decision altitude. See, in my view, I've got the, uh, the zoom set to 15 miles now, so I have good situational awareness. If you were in auto zoom, this would be zooming right in. It would eventually zoom down to less than a mile as you go by the, the waypoint. And uh, in my mind, that diminishes your situational awareness a little bit too much. Okay, about a minute now to the turn, and there's our indication to turn in seven seconds. And we make the turn. Okay, so watch the enunciation switch as we roll out from terminal to LNAV plus V. And then at that point, the uh, glide path will pop up. So there it is, LNAV plus V, and the glide path above us can uh, activate approach mode on the autopilot at this point to intercept the glide path here on this computer simulation. If you tap the altitude key, the computer simulation will follow the glide path for you. So glide path just centering now. And we'll start to follow it down. So we're just coming down to three miles back from Epteg. We'll probably lose about another thousand feet between here and Epteg. So that right now we're at 48, so that would be 38, which is well above the 3200 minimum on the approach plate. And that's good, but we'll just confirm that. So notice uh, again, uh, in the good old days of diving and driving, pilots would be dropping like a rock down to 3200 feet here. But now we're following a stabilized approach. We'll, f we'll cross Epteg. Um, above 3,200, but on a glide path. So a mile and a half back from Epteg, we'll probably lose about another 500 feet between here and Epteg. All of our checklists are now complete. Slow to VREF plus 20. Okay, so here we are crossing Epteg. You see the, the flag will flip for just a second. There's the flip, and we crossed it at 3,800, so as predicted, we're safe. So now we're descending to our pseudo decision altitude of 2,770. And we will reach the decision altitude before we get to Lodlow. That's uh, very important to, to realize. 
uh, and so we will be initiating the mist approach not at Laudlow but at a decision altitude of 2770 and uh, then we need to climb straight ahead to the mist approach point. Now in this particular instance the mist approach is straight ahead anyway but regardless of any turns uh, called for in the mist approach none of those turns should be made until after the mist approach point. So when flying these LNAV plus V approaches the initial mist approach is always straight ahead to the mist approach point. Okay, so final checks complete. The gear is down and locked. So 200 feet above. Hundred above. Decision altitude. And we start the missed approach. So we start climbing. You notice that we're still uh, 0.4 miles back from Lodlow as we initiate the climb. So as we reach Lodlow, then the GPS will go into suspend mode we're already climbing out so we're just up oh, there we are we passed uh, Lodlow and we see it says suspend here so since we are doing the missed approach we hit the OBS button right below the suspend and uh, the GPS now cycles to Setki if we were required to make any turns now would be the time to do it this particular one there are no turns so we're just climbing straight ahead up to 3900 and uh, we would of course switch back to Edmonton Center and get further clearance. Um, so now we're level at 3,700. We might put our approach flaps back down, maintain 140 knots and settle in for a hold if uh, Edmonton tells us there's going to be a delay. But for the purposes of this video we have now successfully completed the approach and the missed approach and uh, presumably we're going to get a clearance on to to our alternate now so hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time